samples and uh, collecting specimens. And that they kind of watched over some of the planets. And she knew a lot about Earth's past history. And they talked about that. And then she didn't know a lot about the culture now. And you fill her in on some of the details. And she did know about some of the things that were going to come up in the future uh, about earthquakes and things like that that were going to hit Earth. And uh, eventually, uh, they wound up having sex. I suppose that was his reward for, uh, they did do a medical exam on it, by the way, and that was his reward for cooperating in that department. So I, I kind of thought, uh, after studying in this case, that maybe the reason that uh, Alvin wound up having sex with the captain was because there were no males on board the ship and she did say they had been gone for a long time from their planet and the women on board were all flirting with them and were real happy to see a man on board. So that could be one of the reasons why they were eager to be in One thing that we can learn from encounters like this is that aliens appear to have a similar uh, motivations to humans, sexual and emotional. <coughs> like I said, it doesn't always wind up this way, but that it does at all does tell us that they uh, uh, have some of the same passions, some of the same feelings, and some of the same interests that we do. And there are different races, the reptilians and the Nordics and, and other types. Uh, there's some other books out that talk about this, like mine, and a lot of them talk about the reptilians having a, a very big sexual interest in uh, at least human females. I've never heard of them having uh, sex with males. But that could be because most of their crew members are male, so they you know, just want the first female. Uh, I guess now I'll just take some questions if anybody has any. Were these women considered to be Nordic? Uh, yeah, they, because of the blonde hair and being so tall that they're quite a different type. Two, two quick. Uh, <coughs> I haven't read a little bit about how this stuff. Have you ever run across any occasion where the male had, had his operation or one of the females that had her tube tied or anything would be the first question? And then what would have happened? Have you ever seen that uh, part did, of any literature? Yeah, there, um, see, uh, Betty Andresen, you know, they wrote that book, The Watchers, and the Andresen Affair, Phase 1, Phase 2. Uh, she had been abducted all throughout her life, and once when they abducted her to extract eggs, they were pretty horrified to find that she had had a hysterectomy. And of course, that involved the total removal of all your eggs. I'm sure that's happened in your time. But no vasectomy or anything like that? Uh, no, I've never heard of anything about a vasectomy. I did want to mention also that when I'm talking about the reptilian thing, um, he told her that one of the reasons why they put implants into people is because they, have, they act like a two-way TV or a two-way radio. They can hear what you're saying and they can see what you're seeing. And he said that that was how they had decoded our language over a long stretch of time, by implanting people, listening to the way we talk, and then they were able to figure out what we were saying. Uh, also, a lot of abductees have implants in their sexual organs, in their head, uh, in their hand, foot, leg, whatever. Uh, maybe the ones that have them in the sex organs, they're doing a sex study on to just watch, you know, how we, how we do it, how often we do it for procreation purposes. And then the other part, um, anything in the literature about homosexuality? Uh, only one to case. The or, 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 I'm in, a, in contact with a researcher named Don Morley, and he studies these tall and white types. And I'd ask him if for any information he might have about uh, sexual encounters, and he sent me a little bit. And there was one case of an uh, um, extraterrestrial male and having a homosexual affair with a human. And this is an ongoing thing with a guy we picked up periodically. So, anybody else have any? Is conventional communication or is communication by conventional uh, speech as we know it? In some cases, most people uh, say that it's telepathic, but in the case of that reptilian, uh, he knew English, so he 
he spoke to her in English. It just depends on uh, the alien, I guess. <laughs> Cynthia, is there any indication that uh, these sexual encounters with uh, aliens are possibly the cause of some of the legends? The second, especially most of these aliens are very attractive, but the second kind of looks demonic. And uh, the first sex of middle ages, there have been legends of demonic possessions, especially uh, incubi and succubi, which are demonic beings that come into the night, at night usually and have sexual relationships with human beings. I did That's talk about that. Role. I did talk about that in my book. Um, I do believe that that could count for a lot of that that went on during the Middle Ages and probably still goes on. Uh, but some of those incubus and succubus were invisible. And some of the people that are reporting this a lot of these cases came uh, from the 1970s, especially the ones involved in the co-ed. And a, a lot of the times, uh, the being was invisible. So uh, back in those days, a lot of it was being attributed to succubus or incubus. But the fact that they saw a UFO before it happened makes me think that it was probably an extraterrestrial type thing. But that, like you said, probably does account a lot for uh, that behavior going on in the past. And like the fairies and the, uh, the changelings, you know, back a long time ago, the, the uh, people over in Ireland and such were saying that their babies were being taken off by these little people and uh, exchanged, and they would bring back one, and they were supposed to raise that one. Uh, some people just believe now that, that those were little hybrid babies and that those were probably aliens, maybe those little gray types that people were seeing and they were called fairies. Any more questions? So what, what uh, has anybody done to study like how many species there are and what, uh, you know, the, kind of the percentage of them, you always hear about the grades quite a bit, but uh, yeah. we talk about them and all, but uh, are, are the Nordics really rare? Uh, no, the Nordics are not rare. They're, as a matter of fact, yeah. they're almost as prevalent as the grades, and from my research, it shows that those little gray aliens work for those uh, taller ones. And a lot of people get confused because they don't see the taller ones. But I'm in communication with the guy that was abducted by the little grays numerous times. And eventually, one of the taller uh, Nordic type blondes came in while this was going on. And Travis Walton, uh, remember Fire in the Sky? Uh, he was abducted by the little gray type. And then, uh, now this wasn't in the movie because they wouldn't put it in there, but I have some old UFO magazines that talk about this. Uh, once he was taken in and examined, a taller uh, extraterrestrial male that looked like one of those Nordic types actually escorted him out of the spacecraft because he was breaking things up in there trying to get away. <laughs> but they left that out of the Hollywood version because I guess it was not exciting enough for her. In your authentical research, you found the uh, history of what you Oh, yes. Uh, in my other three books, <coughs> book I mainly just kind of wrote for fun, but in my other book, uh, in Genesis 6, 1 through 4, we did the first time that any hybridization took place, and it says the sons of the deities came down from heaven, and they took daughter of the daughters of men, whomever they chose, and they had sexual relations with them, and then children were born of them. And if you look at the Hebrew word for Nephilim, which is giant, there are two forms of that word. There, one form of it is divided by Yod in the middle of the little Hebrew character that looks like that. Uh, that designated a child that came from those Nephilim. In other words, that was a hybrid when you saw that. You knew that was half human, half uh, Nephilim. And then um, um, the other uh, phase of the word meant strictly one of those beings that had come down from heaven. So that's the first case, and if you look all through the Bible, there are numerous cases. Uh, Moses was a hybrid. Uh, you have to look in the New Testament to see this poem. <laughs> it talks about how he was divinely beautiful, and in other words, he looks like one of them because they had very striking features, the real white hair and the real fair skin. And then Noah was one. Uh, if you look at the book of Enoch, 
uh, it just gives a real good description of what he looks like. He had the pure white hair, real white skin, and his eyes gave off light so much that whenever he was born, the whole house lit up on the inside, and he was actually projecting an aura, which was another characteristic of the uh, deity of the Old Testament and the angels, like, and even Jesus Christ, they you know, had an aura. So those, they're all in the Bible hybrid. Samson, I believe, is one. And also uh, the legends, like the Greek legends and such. Uh, Hercules, his father, I believe, was Zeus. And then Gilgamesh, who was a Sumerian hero of an epic poem, uh, he was three parts uh, Nephilim or, or God, and then one part human. So he was definitely a hybrid. He was always upset because he's going to have to die and suffer the fate of a mortal. What about the immaculate conception? That, uh, well, I believe that Jesus Christ is probably a hybrid because he has, uh, his father is from heaven, his mother is from earth, and it's in vitro fertilization, obviously, uh, the mother was a virgin. That a lot of research has been done on that, and I've talked about that extensively in my book, Born in Heaven. One of the things is, is the use of the word alma. The what? The use of the word alma. Uh, when they do the translations in the Bible and all, they, they don't mean that Mary was a virgin. Uh -huh. <coughs> it's due to a translation. Well, so I've heard that the... unmarried, if you look at the customs of the Hebrews in those times, unmarried females did not have sex because they were stoned to death and they got caught doing that. So, and she also served in the temple. Uh, that's in extra biblical writing. Highly unlikely she would have an opportunity to do some anything like people that. People think that she was married to Joseph too. They were married. Well, a betrothal in those days was a marriage. It that just was, was an unconfirmated marriage. Once you were betrothed, you belonged to your husband or whatever. They weren't in the custom of doing it with someone else. Anything else? <coughs> <laughs> Has anyone ever heard of or examined a human baby suspected to be a hybrid? Uh, yeah, there's, uh, I talked about that in my book. There's a doctor out in California that uh, supposedly this lady was pregnant, had been abducted, uh, was really traumatized. She claimed to have been raped, and there are some cases of actual rape that I talked about in my, my book. And when the baby was born from that encounter, it was a dubious mixed breeding. <laughs> And the doctor put that in his report and everything. So I don't know what happened to the body on the no. Related to the Bible code, we talked about possible features, and I think one of the things that talks about is an asteroid in the earth. Um, has any of those abductees or anything talked about any time? Uh, yes, they have, and I talk about that in my in all three of my books. I talk about, about the possibility of an asteroid and what the catalyst.